going to introduce you to our anniversary Toastmaster, Mr. Jerry Evans, Distinguished Toastmaster. Thank you, Mr. President. I just love saying it because I've known Bob for a long time, and tonight we're here to celebrate. As Bob said, we're here to celebrate Top's eighth anniversary. We're here to toast in the brand new year, and also to celebrate a significant milestone, which we'll get into a little bit later. I think some of you might be aware of what that might be. But we're glad that you all could join us this evening. It really has been a terrific journey for this club. I'm going to talk about how Top started in just a moment, but before we begin, I want to make sure Neil passed out raffle tickets to everyone. Did everyone get a raffle ticket? Yes, yes? Okay, Bob, make sure you get one. Vegeta Svetlana can get one. I need the one. And I know Joanne provided name tags for everyone. If you didn't get a name tag, please see Joanne. Joanne is right here. Joanne is our Vice President of Membership and a terrific Toastmaster, so make sure you get a name tag. And please be sure that you sign in on the sign-in sheet because we'll keep you on our mailing list. We'll make sure that you get information about the different workshops and seminars that TOP's doing. And as we get into, I think most of us are aware that we're going to have these things called contests again come the fall. And I'll have somebody talk about that in a moment. But let's quickly do this. Before I get into I want you all to introduce yourself. We're going to do kind of a lightning round. I want to recognize, for those of you who don't know her, I'm going to please ask her to stand. She is District 30's Program Quality Director, Ms. Stella Lawrence. She is going to be in charge of education and training. Can we use a little bit more education and training? Yes. Yeah, she's going to make sure that we raise the bar this year on education and training. Because I know that all of you that have gone to officer's training or other sessions, you felt that you got full value out of all those trainings. Yes? yes. Sure, yes. Yeah. Sort of, kind of, right? Well, Stella's going to make sure that we up the game this year, 2018, 2019. So we're going to start here in the front. I'm going to ask you, just I want you to say your name, what club you're from, and then we'll go through, and then we'll get this party started. So Harsh, if we start with you, just let everyone know your name, what club you're with. Sure. Please stand, uh, so yes. My name is Harsh Sharma. I'm with uh, Club uh, Kavi, Kavi Corporate Club. And I'm the president of the club for the, uh, for this next term, and I'm glad to be here uh, on uh, Jay's invitation. So yeah, I'm looking forward. Hi, right. 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 um, I'm Harsha's wife, Shruti. This is my first time in a in the meeting like this. I'm really looking forward to it and saying hi to all of you. Hi. 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 I'm a from a Sunday speaker, like our president in the back. On the top of that, I'm also from Top. Yay! Yay! I'm Diane Bolesh. I'm from Look Who's Talking in Gurney, formerly Mount Prospect. I'm Chico from Chris Lake Toastmasters and Chris Lake. Yay! Woo! <laughs> Mary Matron and Conti Automotivated Speakers. All right. All right. And Kelly right here. Yeah! Yay! Tony Livernoy, Northwest Suburban Toastmasters, Mount Prospect Toastmasters, Talk of the Town Toastmasters. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you Thank you for program. having me. with the program, Tony. Tony brings his own club car. And it's not empty for his other club. Come on, now. <laughs> yeah. I'm Kim Barrett, uh, Toastmasters on Purpose. Yay. Good evening, everybody. I'm Anna Klausen, and I'm a guest. Woo. All right. Fusan, Long Grove, Lake Zurich, and Top VPE. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Richard Johnson, Bellwood, Toastmaster, VPE, and club number is 589107. All right, welcome. Right. 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 It's Mamie Burks. <laughs> yes, I am Mamie Burks, and I'm from Bellwood, Toastmaster, with Walter. And I'm a PR person this year, and you may distinguish that y'all know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay, I think we've got everybody. Yes, did I miss anyone? Tim. Doesn't everybody know Tim? <laughs> Seriously? Um, Tim, introduce yourself, please. Former unofficial district videographer and member of three clubs, my name is Tim Bolger. Mm -hmm. All right, Tim. Videographer extraordinaire. Yeah. Yeah. And these two individuals up here, they didn't let us know who they are, did they? No. 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 And Virginia. Virginia. It is his fashion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Hi. Hi, I'm Virginia Bosserman, and I am the treasurer of Top. I also am also the treasurer of Look Who's Talking, and the Toast of UL, and I'm the vice president of education of Club Toast at UL. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Roger Matthews. I'm a member of Top, and also Mount Prospect Toastmasters. Okay. One other, one order, of, one other order of business until we get this going. Can I please have all of our top officers please stand? Okay, we will start, we'll start with. Yeah, we'll start right. We'll start with Bob Roman. Bob, president, president. of top Toastmasters. Valerie Fusan. Vice president of education. <laughs> Vice president of membership. Yay! Joanne. 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 Joanne Pally. Okay. Vice President of PR. Z. Uh, PR person. I just learned that there's a new term from that. Ah! <laughs> 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 Not the PR, but a PR person. I'm the person. PRP, yes. that's that vampire facial. That's right. <laughs> PPR, all right. Kim? Uh, secretary for top. Okay. Virginia, you already heard. Money. She's the, money money. Woman. She's the money She's the money for all the clubs. That's right. And Rogers, our immediate past president. So please give them all a hand for this start. Okay. Everyone knows what this is, yes? The celebration device of distraction. So if you haven't turned it off yet, if it makes any of those noises, Good? Everybody's turned off? Yes. Yes, this way we don't interrupt our presenters this evening and we can have a distraction-free meeting. Speaking is like sex. If you're not having If you're not having fun You know the first one that always speaks up. Right? Right? That shouts the loudest. <laughs> Speaking is like sex. If you're not having fun, you're either not doing it right or you're doing it with the wrong person. <laughs> so just keep that in mind as we go through the meeting this evening. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Rick, Rick, Rick thought he was gonna get a he thought he was gonna get a spot as a humorist on the agenda tonight, but Val said, no, thank you. No, thank you. Okay, everybody has an agenda, yes? No. 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 Who doesn't have an agenda? Okay, as Kim and Val, they're passing out the agendas, we are going to your raffle tickets, you want to hang on to those because we're going to have the raffle during the break. We're going to raffle off eight prizes during the break and you know why we're doing eight, right? Top celebrating eight years. And then, for those of you who want to hang out with us until the very end, we're going to have some tremendous grand prizes. It's going to be worth you sticking around until the very end. So we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to participate. So the longer you stay, the bigger the prize, the bigger the reward. Okay? Nobody so we, ever leaves top. No. <laughs> we know that. So we're going to have four speakers this evening.
Toastmasters on purpose, every single meeting we have an educational speaker. Well, tonight we have a special speaker. It's a special session because I think you'll be able to relate to it because as we kick off and toast in the brand new Toastmaster year, this topic is going to be this topic is going to be relevant to each and every one of us as we get into the new Toastmaster year. Oh. Okay. Thanks, Val. Our first speaker this evening is Virginia Bosserman, DTM. Why make a plan? Because it's a key to success. Virginia is going to tell us how we can be successful Toastmasters using Pathways and their traditional program. How many of you started on Pathways yet? Okay. How many of you intend to continue with the traditional program? Virginia will, Virginia will talk about that. So when you think about your plan, you might be thinking about it in terms of goals. Well, Virginia's going to put a new spin on it tonight, and she's going to give us some gins peration. So a little bit different approach to this subject tonight. So please help me welcome distinguished Toastmaster Virginia Bossaman. What's your plan, Virginia Bossaman? that the Toastmasters year starts July 1st is that it doesn't conflict with the December 31st, January 1st setting of resolutions. Which, by the way, for those of you who did set them, we're more than halfway through the year. I'm working on mine. Uh, thank goodness I still have another five and a half months to achieve them. What we want to do is have a plan for our club. Have a plan for ourselves. And this year and next, we have a smorgasbord of options that we can choose from. The last time when I was at the TLI, there were some people at my table that were very confused. One of the VPEs said, well, there's no sense in doing anything with the competent communicator manual or the CL manual because they're no good anymore. Might as well throw them out. I said, throw them out? First of all, why would you throw them out? The competent communicator manual is a very valuable resource. And secondly, if you're halfway through or if you've only done two speeches, why wouldn't you finish it? And he said, well, because it doesn't count for anything. Mm -hmm. What do you mean it doesn't count for anything? It counts for a competent communicator. It doesn't count for a point for my club. Yes, it does, if you can find somebody else doing one. <laughs> he immediately assumed that because of pathways, all of the traditional education programs were dissolved. And he actually argued with me. And Jerry will tell you that that's not a fun thing to do. <laughs> I said, no, you can go ask any of the trio. They would be happy to tell you that until June 30th of 2020, you can continue to achieve traditional Toastmasters goals. So how many of you in the room actually have a competent communicator or a competent leader manual in your possession somewhere in your home or somewhere else? Awesome. Are they completed? Yes. Working on them. <coughs> working on them. Okay. Keep working on them. Why wouldn't you? I think the competent communicator manual is a wonderful thing to have when I need to practice a speech that doesn't fit in my pathway program. The speech I'm doing tonight is from my 16th competent communicator go. Yeah, I've been doing it a while. Yes, there it is, all beat up. <laughs> Getting evaluated. Getting evaluated. Ethel Goatee, my coworker, beat it into my head when I was a new Toastmaster. Never give a speech away for free. 
Get credit for it. She's not here tonight, but Val will tell her that I did get credit for it. So let's look at the DCP program because our goals flow into the club goals. And the club goals come from Toastmasters International. Now, is there anybody in the room who has never seen or heard of the Distinguished Club program before? And we have a couple of visitors. So this is going to be like alphabet soup to you. Let's see if I can get this. Yeah. All right. Now, if we have handed out, did you? OK, so everyone has a handout that looks like this. So look on this side of the page. That is the Distinguished Club Report for top. Which, by the way, 10 for 10. Yay. Yay. <laughs> the top of the screen, where all the check marks are, are the traditional program. So if you've been a Toastmaster for years, you're used to the fact that you need to have four CCs and CLs and advanced all the way through. And then here are the Pathways Awards, right? We didn't happen to have any Pathways Awards submitted yet, but we will. I've already finished some. And the neat thing is you can mix and match them. And that's what I am going to show you. Whoops, wrong way. <coughs> so, these are equivalent in the program. So if you have two people in your club who are working on a CC, encourage them to finish them. Then if you have four people who are working in pathways on level one, have them go ahead and do that. Those are two points right there. So you might say to yourself, well, how come I only have to have two CCs and I only have to have four level ones. Does anybody know how many speeches are in a level one? Five. Right. And how many speeches are mm -hmm. in a competent communicator? Maybe ten. ten. Oh, do the math. <laughs> Either way, it's 20 speeches. Okay. Then we do it again. We always do everything twice when we come to the very basics because that's where everybody starts. And this is where I want to emphasize to all the officers. How many of you think you're going to get very many level fours or level fives right away? Yeah. yeah. People are just getting into pathways. You will probably be able to get eight people if you have a fear at charter strength to do the level ones. You might even get one or two people to do level two or level three. But it's going to take a long time because two paths are the requirement for a DTM plus all the leadership projects that we've always had to do, as opposed to 40 speeches in the traditional program. So it's going to be a while. So what could you do instead? Oh, got to love that competent leader manual. It's what we're doing in the club anyway. If you've got some, use them because one CL or an ALB, the easiest award ever if you are an officer, because once you've done your CL, if you've been an officer for a year and you went to training and you helped plan your club success, you just need to give two of the presentations from the leadership series and club excellence series. Bam, you've got an ALB. That fast. So you might as well keep doing that. And I know that, now Stella, just you know, think about something else. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. It doesn't hurt to bank some. <laughs> okay, anybody done? I, I've done that. I don't need them. What do, I, what do I need all those awards for in one year? So if you are a person, if you've already got your DTM, you've already achieved your personal goal, then go ahead and bank it and save it for your club for next July. But be creative. 
have all of my clubs, I'm happy to say, are President's Distinguished. And we've all had icebreaker parties. And they were so much fun. When you think about it, if you've been a Toastmaster for a while, when was the last time you gave an icebreaker? If you've been a member of the club for seven, eight years, the new members never heard your icebreaker. They've only heard your recent speeches. So to get everybody together and dedicate a special meeting just to icebreakers and everybody does their icebreaker from Pathways, it's like getting to know the people that you thought you knew. What? Because they will share all of those tidbits from their past. You might say, wow, I didn't know you were originally from New York. You don't have an accent or you don't sound like you're from Tennessee. Those are the things that you didn't get to hear because you weren't a Toastmaster eight years ago when that person gave their icebreaker. So think of some fun things that you can do to get the people in your club going in pathways, but don't forget that wonderful traditional program that has served us so well since the 1970s. They're all I'm in the club toast hosts. Yeah. All districts. Wow. Because oh, when districts. when 30, 35, <laughs> almost, for those of you who don't know, 35 was leading the pack. They were what, 90% already, I think? Because they started earlier. They started back in the fall before they all started. They started four years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they did. The fall four years ago. Yeah. 90% of one. The two Fs. But we became number one, and that's attributed to. Val's leadership, her direction, working with the guides and the ambassadors, and they really deserve all the credit for that because Pathways, when it originally started, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, was the Revitalized mm -hmm. Education Program. Oh, yeah. And then it transitioned to evolved into, of course, as we know it today, Pathways. So, but see Val, see Virginia, see Kim, um, and Tony. Tony, and we have plenty of, yeah, yeah so if there's questions you have, see him during the break and chat about that. Okay, now we're going to move on to our second speaker this evening. Our second speaker this evening is also a distinguished Toastmaster. Just a little bit of information for you. When Virginia was talking about CCCLs, you know, advanced manuals or advanced awards, do you know that around the world, out of 352,000 members, 16,400 clubs every year, there are about 8% of Toastmasters that receive a CC? What? What? Eight percent. That's all. Eight percent, because a lot of times people think, "Well, Jerry, it's thirty percent, it's forty percent," but it's been consistent over many, many years. It's only eight percent. So think about the members in your own clubs. And Virginia was talking about going back and sharing information with them. What's going to ignite them? Roger came up with a beautiful saying. He said that, "What excites you ignites you." So what's going to excite those members? It's going to ignite something in them that makes them want to work the educational program. Because that's really what it's all about, folks. That's where we're all here. We all have different reasons. But something that excites you, that resonates with you, that you see, you know, I want to do this, I have to do this, it's going to help me personally and professionally. So whether it's traditional program or the Pathways program. So our next speaker this evening, Diane Bolas, distinguished Toastmaster. Most of us know our next speaker, and if you don't, you will, as a body language expert developing unique and fun programs to help us master our stance, gestures, and all that stuff. But tonight, she's going to go back to her roots. Her first love, music. To share with us some effective, creative techniques that she uses with her clients. There is life outside of Toastmasters, just in case you were wondering. Her, these strategies are designed with her clients to improve presentation skills by addressing a few basic requirements that are often probably overlooked or not even really thought about. Please help me welcome distinguished Toastmaster Diane Bolash to the stage for music to my ears, music to my ears, Diane Bolash. that life takes. I got a phone call last fall from a master gardener friend of mine. 
And she said, Diane, are you still doing that Toastmaster thing? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's kind of an addiction once you're in. She said, well, my husband is worried about an employee of his because he did a presentation and it was awful. No, dreadful. No, humiliating. The young man had only been in this country a little over a year and this was his first opportunity to present before his work team and someone taped it and she said would you be willing to work with him I'd be happy to meet with him and see if there's something I could do or perhaps get him into Toastmasters and I do have to say how many of you are fans of Stephen King horror flicks <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock is more my style yeah I saw the video Anguish does not begin to describe what I was experiencing, but my interpreter training stood me in good stead because no reaction. I felt for this young man who felt that he had failed his family, his team, and that he would never recover. And so I asked him, what do you do to prepare? I've done it all. I repeat, I listen to the newscaster and I repeat sentence by sentence. I work with the dictionary and I work on my pronunciation. And he had listed everything that I've ever heard a good coach tell you to do to improve what's called your intelligibility. Isn't that a mouthful? Everybody say it. Intelligibility. Okay? My deaf clients didn't care how it sounded, just if they understood it. So I had talked with him and I thought, all right. So let's go to the basics. What is your goal? What's your plan? What do you want? And he said, I want to inspire my team. In talking with his boss, he had said he's brilliant. He's very skilled at what he does, but he never wants to attend a meeting. He'd rather just send out emails and have everybody respond, which is the number one strategy that my deaf clients use. Because face to face, they have to worry about whether or not they're really catching, okay? Because speech reading, right? Only 18% of speech is actually visible on the face. All right, so you want to inspire. I couldn't use any of the other coaching techniques that he had already expressed tremendous unsuccess with. And I went back to the basics. Inspire. What's the definition? The absolute root of this word, inspire. We as Toastmasters want to inspire our audience. And we're always focusing on sending it out there. I'm getting vibes going to you. Is it working? <laughs> no. The very first definition of inspire is to take in breath. Do it now. <sighs> to inspire is to take in the very lifeblood, the very value of life. And I knew that nothing else was going to work. And I heard myself talking about the breath. And as Toastmasters, don't we focus on the words, and we focus on the structure, and we focus on our delivery skills. But we forget our first obligation is to ourselves to inspire, to take in, to value what we're offering to our audience. And as he is not from this culture, I found that his tendency was to speak back in his neck, throat here. So when he talked, he talked very quietly. And then he told me this horrific story about how one of his coworkers told him he needed to speak more American <laughs> and he needed to be louder and more bold and use more facial expressions. And you know what happened? At 7 minutes and 23 seconds on the tape, and he went like... <laughs> <laughs> My deaf clients used to call that cow talk. You know, when a hearing person, hello, how are you, thinking it would make it easier? No. So I told him, no facial expression, not even any words. Let's start with the basics. I'm going to ask you all to do 
one quick little exercise to make sure that your breathing is starting with the right foundation. You all know the character of Santa Claus? Mm -hmm. What does Santa say? Ho, ho, ho. ho, ho. Yes, ho, ho, ho. I'd like you to say ho, ho, ho from your diaphragm. I don't want to see any shoulders going. I don't want to see any head bobbing. Only ho, 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 that bowl full of jelly. You know the famous poem? Are you ready? Take your breath. Ho, 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 ho. ho. Did you hear how round that sounded? The very first, the very basic skill in communicating is supporting your message with the vitality of life, inspiring yourself. And so we began with breathing. Much as I did when I started in music, I don't want to tell you how many years ago, because that, yeah, we're not going to go there. But I remembered one of my favorite quotes was from Hans Christian Andersen. Where words fail, music speaks. And I began to work with him in using singing techniques to help him develop confidence, to help him develop the patterns of the English language. Because every language is its own music. It has its own melody. It has its own rhythms. And only through habit do you really become comfortable with them so that you're not on tape trying to speak in a manner that isn't comfortable <coughs> for you. So breathing, our fundamental communication tool, has so many benefits to us as speakers. Very first, what does it do? Breathing. It's good for you, right? <laughs> yeah, you can't live without it. So that's kind of basic, right? <coughs> but it also slows your heart rate. If you are someone who gets nervous in speaking or presenting to your team or having to explain something to your boss, guess what helps? Ho, 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 a nice deep breath from the diaphragm. When you're breathing deeply, you're actually fueling the brain so you can think things through more quickly, you know, that impromptu speaking. Now, this is one that you may not know, but Cornell University talks about a well-oxygenated body has better balance. And for those of us who are in body language, stance and balance are kind of a big thing because they are the foundation for stage presence, Stella. So breathing helps you use your space more clearly. Again, how quickly do we jump over this fundamental skill and get to the words or the message? Another thing that a good, well-supported, a deep breath supported message is it gives you a much stronger air of authority. Because if you duck like this or you don't take any breath, and it's not just it's not just about being quiet, it's about not being round. I'd like you all to take a deep breath and repeat after me, okay? <coughs> The house is on fire. The house, the house is on fire. fire. The house is on 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 fire. Do you feel how just controlling your breath in different manners gives you more support? It's critical that you develop the breathing habits that support your message. And if nothing else, you can't be fully oxygenated and stressed at the same time. It simply doesn't happen. The fight, fight or flight response will not allow you to be stressed out when you allow yourself to take a nice full breath. So when I work with clients, I now start with breathing. There are so many rules and grammatically, and can I pronounce the words and how do the words go together? All music allows us to improve our communication. Ray Ayers, do you know who Roy Ayers? He's a funk master musician. I love this quote from him. The true beauty of music is that it connects people. It carries a message, and we, the musicians, are the messengers. But if we don't master our instruments and develop healthy, supportive habits, how do we expect anyone to carry our message forward? 
So before your next project, before you worry about structure and the echo and the triplets and all those wonderful Toastmaster techniques that we all learn, take a few minutes. Pretend you're Santa. Ho, ho, ho. Do you feel that diaphragm? Do it again for me. Ho, ho, ho. As long as we're having New Year's, we might as well have a little Christmas, don't you think? And if you're struggling with your speech, I would suggest you take it to the next step. Sing your message. <laughs> Seriously. Now, the gentleman that I was working with, his culture has a very strong intonation pitches in their grammar. So for him to speak in an American grammatical form with intonation was extraordinarily challenging. But I turned him on to a couple of Beatles songs that helps with patterning for the phrases. And you can do the same. Explore your favorite song and then convert your message into that melody. And you'll begin to hear your message with many different possibilities and not fall into old habits. So music, music to our ears, my language, your language, our message, our connection. It all starts with being inspired, Mr. Tosin. <laughs>this is an interactive meeting how many of you have participated in a round robin before so the majority know what a round robin is excellent excellent so here's what we're going to do we're going to have five minutes joanne's going to give us five minutes and we're going to do a round robin and just raise your hand if you all don't have anything to say then just some of you raise your hand and give diane one suggestion what you thought she did really well and then one suggestion or she'd say a glow that she can improve on. All right, Tim? Just a quick question. Will Jabba the Hutt also take the place of Santa Claus? <laughs> well, and you know the Katy Perry song? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. There are, there are a number of different songs that you can use to practice different breathing techniques, and I'm putting together a list for that. Okay. All right, hands, feedback. Ah. Diane, I always like when you speak because your gestures are always correct on, on what you're saying. But I would have liked you to give a little bit more about this fellow after you coached him that you saw a video and what changed. And it's next week. His follow-up presentation is next Thursday. So. Where? Thank you, Bob. Mary? Uh, well, uh, you are obviously very practiced and capable with uh, your vocal variety, your facial expressions, and your body motion. Uh, but grow, I would say, you seem to be very anchored to that yeah. corner of the table. And I was at this club when you gave a presentation <laughs> about the geography of the stage, which I have used tremendously in evaluations and personal. Okay. Yeah. GPS. Yeah. Yes. GPS. Okay. Well, Kim? Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. Diane, I, I appreciated the information you gave and the, and the points. Um, I totally get the breathing thing, and it's very important. Your title is Music to My Ears, and you referred to music, and I would like to have had you sing something as an example because that was missing for me. Yeah, thanks. She's part of the entertainment at halftime. <laughs> oh, yeah, the halftime show. Okay, thanks. Awesome. <laughs> Who else? Come on now. Come on. All right, James. Hey, I really like that they said on about the breathing because I think that's one of the most. Actually, if you, if you look at an infant child, you will see that they breathe from their diaphragm. And what happens is that we grow and get older, we bring more and more attention <laughs> into the body and we become thoracic <laughs> because just breathing. So I, I was really fascinated with that ass. And when we do that, that also affects our projection. Yes. Because when we're breathing up here, you can't really project. Who else? Joanne? I was really most engaged when 
you paused and didn't move so much and didn't make so many facial movements. I'm not criticizing them at all. I'm just saying that I was really then captured because the pause helped me take in, breathe in what you wanted us to get. Thank you, Joanne. Down. Yeah, I really liked how you uh, demonstrated uh, demonstrated the people and how uh, how we can improve based on what you notice about them. You know, the, having their voice in their throat and how to get past. You know, how to um, open up your your volume, your voice. Um, what I would suggest is just. You're, you're, you have a wonderful voice. I think for the size of this room, you could have spoken just a little bit, just a little bit louder uh, to carry the back of the room. Okay. Thank you, Val. Anyone else? Paul. I really liked your topic. I actually gave a speech myself on using the diaphragm for breathing uh, more towards like intensity and such. Mm -hmm. My my point of my speech was uh, using the intensity of a shout when you whisper. And that's, that's, it's all voice control. I've been singing since I could talk, and I, I've learned it all, and it's a great idea to share with a lot of people, because you see so many people get up there and fall flat on their face because they don't want to breathe. Thank you, Paul. We have a John minute Pierre. left. One minute. So, uh, that was very wonderful to hear you, and uh, I can relate to it being uh, that type of person you mentioned before, so I don't know how I survive in the corporate world. Something that would be helpful to your mantis or your, you know, just relaxation with a little wine, but without telling them why. <laughs> John Pierre, you can try that next time in your corporate presentation. Sing it and a little wine together. All right, we got time for one more. Jim. I really found this to be quite valuable, and I think a full handout with a list of songs from different genres that people could try to sing along to and get the feeling because we're all going to go blank. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, for the feedback. If you have additional comments, feedback for Diane, please see her during the break or before you leave tonight. Now we're going to switch gears and we're going to go into contest mode. Everybody familiar with the World Championship of Public Speaking? Yeah. Yes. Do you know when it's taking place? August. August. August when? 24th. Yeah, it starts the 22nd. August 22nd through Saturday. Semifinals will be on Thursday and the final will be on Saturday. Well, tonight we're going to go into contest mode. I'm going to introduce the speaker's name, his title twice and his name. I won't say anything else about him because that's how he would be introduced when he's competing. James Trawick, when life gives you lemons. When life gives you lemons, James Trawick. give you lemons, you make lemonade. These are the words spoken to me by my wise old grandmother. She would often tell me you may not have a choice about the limitations that life has given you, but you do have a choice on how you react to those limitations. I know three people who overcame their limitations to achieve greatness. Ray Charles overcame the envision impaired to become a great musician. Helen Keller overcame being hearing impaired to become a great educator. Albert Einstein overcame a learning disability to become a great scientist. Have you overcome your limitations? Mr. Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, and future Toastmasters. When I was in the second grade, I had a severe speech impediment. I the, the, the studied when I spoke. As a result, I was laughed at, ridiculed, and teased. Have you ever been teased? Consequently, I became shy, introverted. 
I did not feel good about myself, but life had given me a limit of low self-esteem. My wise old grandmother would say, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. <laughs> Grandma, what does that mean? That means in every negative situation, you look for something positive. Lawson Elementary School, located on the west side of Chicago, was this gigantic red brick building with four levels. On the fourth level, there was one room, room 400, special education. If you were in this room, you were labeled as being dumb and stupid, not very smart. It was the end of my second grade year, sitting in class, anxious, excited, waiting to receive my report card, wondering what third grade class I'm going to be in the fall. Who's going to be my third grade teacher? What new friends am I going to make? I received my report card. It read, in the fall, report to room 400, special education. Pain! Imagine the pain of a seven-year-old child being labeled as dumb and stupid. <coughs> Have you ever been labeled? <clears throat> I took my report card home, gave it to my grandmother. She smiled as she put her arms around me and said, do you remember what I said when life gave you lemons? The, 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 yes, ma'am. You said the, when life gave you lemons, you make lemonade. Do you recall what that means? That, that, that means in every negative situation, you look for something positive. But Grandma, what the, the positive about this? You go to visit your aunt in Cleveland, Ohio this summer. You're going to stay there and go to school. <coughs> Grandma, the, the, the why? May I have that lemon? Sometimes life gives you lemons, but just like a lemon, it must go through a change in order to become lemonade. This is why I'm sending you to live with your aunt, so that you, like this lemon, can go through a change and have a better opportunity in life. So in the fall of my third grade year, I attended McKinley Elementary School in Cleveland, Ohio. My teacher was this little old lady, Miss Mary Johnson, with this deep voice and wore these thick, thick glasses, baffled, but I thought they said binoculars. <laughs> she also heard everything that went on in the class. For example, if she turned her back and you were to whisper to someone, what are you going to do after school? Boy, you better be quiet, which is okay as long as she didn't call your name. But if she called your name, you were going to be punished. Either miss recess or stay after school and do some work on the board. I should know. Because I stayed after school many a day to work on the board. <laughs> because I didn't want to go outside and be teased. One day she put this division problem on the board. 91 divided by 13. She has declared, who knows the answer? <coughs> I look this way, no one raised their hand. I look this way, no one raised their hand. Then I heard that inner voice say, you know the answer. What are you afraid of? <coughs> go ahead, raise your hand. I raised my hand. And I heard another voice say, what if you're wrong? What if you fail? You're going to be laughed at and ridiculed by the children in the class. But life has just given me a lemon of doubt. I snatched my hand down, but it was too late. She saw me. So James, <laughs> as I sit there with sweat and perspiration running down my face, <laughs> trying to figure out how can I get out of this, I said to myself, maybe if I just say something, she'll pass me back. I turned my head and went, what life give you lemon? Boy, stand up, speak up. I jumped up seven. I looked at her. She looked at me. Then this bright light came over her face like a proud grandmother. And she smiled and said, yes, yes, you're right. And in that moment, that very moment, my life changed. My lemons turned to lemonade. <laughs> For I realized one of two things. I was not as dumb and stupid as everyone said I was. No one else raised their hand. <laughs> or I was the smartest dummy in the class. <laughs> <laughs> and from that experience, 
I realize the limit of low self-esteem, the limit of feeling dumb and stupid, and the limit of self-doubt did not define who I was, just as Ray Charles was not defined by his blindness. Helen Keller was not defined by her deafness. Albert Einstein was not defined by his learning disability. Are you being defined by your <laughs> limitations? It's <laughs> toast mess. speech contest starts every year, of course it starts at the club level, progresses to the area, to the division, and to the district, 30,000 Toastmasters around the world compete for the title of World Championship of Public Speaking. So James is going to be competing for the World Championship of Public Speaking on Thursday the 24th. We're going to have 10 minutes, round robin, same, same process, one strength that you thought he had, what he did really well, and then one suggestion for improvement. Because we have a lot of folks in the room, so just raise your hand. And I would ask that whatever, if Bob says something and you don't repeat it, because then we'll just move on to the next person. Go ahead, Bob. James, uh, I, you added humor to your speech. You're more concise in what you were saying. It's excellent. There's only just one thing that I would say. Helen Keller not only was deaf, she was also blind, yes. and you only mentioned that she was deaf. So when you mention Helen Keller, mm -hmm. she even had a heart. She was the first person who was blind and deaf when able to communicate with somebody because right. she had a great teacher. Maybe you can, if you have a little time, maybe you can put that in your speech. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Bob Chico. Hey, James, my, my glow is I, I really like how you, you put us in there. You, you craft a story, and like I was in that classroom with you. Just to make it a little bit more maybe audience-centered, that one point where you said, have you ever been labeled? <coughs> Way to beat there. So let the, let the audience stick it in for them for a second so they'll think of a time when they were labeled. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Dick? I thought the gestures with the lemon was very good. However, when you are introduced, you want to think of your appearance to the audience. And when you were introduced, you came up and stood there. Before you said word one, I'll get it. You were putting me. You got a lot of competition. You don't have to button your coat in front of the whole audience. Do that before you come up. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Next. Diane. James, I, I loved how, personally, I love lamentations. Yes. That, yeah. I think the Great. first time you say it, though, really exaggerated so people get it. No um, but the area when you come home after you've gotten your report card and you're having the conversation with your grandmother, your response to her is entirely too adult. Mm. You know, it, uh, you know, it, you you went into this this full neutral narrative voice, and it was very adult like. Instead of saying I'm scared or I'm mad or something, it just didn't sound like a second grader. And if you're going to go into voicing her mm -hmm. as her, you want to make sure you voice yourself as the child. Otherwise, it, it it's kind of jarring. Okay. Hmm. Thanks, Dad. G, uh, I just want to echo what uh, Bob said. So, in your speech, you asked two questions. Have you ever been teased? Have you ever been labeled? I think those two questions went too fast. It's just a, you, you, yeah, give it a yeah, one second, like pause. Yeah, let us uh, think about it. That's a, a good opportunity to build a connection with your audience. At least you'll give some like, like connection there. Okay, thanks, Z. Paul? I really like the, the having the lemon and then pulling the lemonade out of your pocket. Two things on that. It might be better if you had a bottle rather than a box. I don't know how that would work for you. But don't. you were kind of quick putting it away. Take it out and show it so everybody can see that it's lemonade. Because I was over here, and you kind of made a point in the other direction. 
Okay. Who else? Okay, Tony. Uh, James, you, you talked over the last line of the binoculars. I didn't know what you said. Okay. It, and that's a clear, obvious, you've, you're going to get the laugh. You know you're going to get the laugh. But you kept talking, and I heard the laughter around me, and I didn't hear what followed. Oh. And I think it was a good point, but I don't know what it was. So l give yourself that pause when you know the laugh line is coming. Thanks, Tom. Now? When you're, um, I really, you know, of course, I, I love your speech and the the whole message of the the lemon, um, the lemon limitations. You know, that's great. Um, when you are making a point to the audience, and that's, have you ever been teased? Have you ever been labeled? Um, your gesture is like you're forcing it. Be a little more natural. Uh, and so instead of maybe going with one hand, maybe the, the whole audience, have you ever been teased? And make sure that once you say those words, you pause. Let them hear, let us think about it. Because we are thinking about it. Give us a chance to think about it. And when you say, uh, boy, stand up, pause there. Wherever there is a, a message, a time for us to think, a time for us to uh, to absorb that message, you need to pause. You, you talk too fast. And at the end, before you say Toastmaster, stand there and take the applause. You, you, you finish and then you say Mr. Toastmaster. Stand there. You're going to be on this big stage. Stand there and let people applaud you. And then do it. So wait a few a few seconds. Mm -hmm. okay. Two minutes. Thanks, Mary? Um, I liked everything. I think you had great gestures and vocal variety. Um, similar thing to what I said to Diane. I think you can use the stage a little bit better, a little bit more creatively. I felt like you started like a little bit to the other side of Jerry over there and then ended up almost, almost smushed to the table. So, you know, use that space and use the front and back depth as well. Maybe plot it out a little bit better so it's clearer to the audience. Okay, one more. David. Uh, James, I really no. like your speech. And one thing I want to think is the change from lemon to lemonade um, from your story. It's a wonderful story. But it seems to me maybe we need to add more depth to it. That basically you answer the question from the teacher, right? And then from that you you turn you it's a lot changer. I don't know. Maybe you add add it even more to that. Hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dave. Okay. If you have additional feedback for James, please talk to him during the break or before you leave. Uh, it's really important to him. He's got a number of weeks before uh, the semifinals. <laughs> or write it down and hand it. Or write it down and yes. Written still works. Okay. I'm going to take a minute to give you a little bit of an info commercial about Toastmasters on Purpose. How many of you have ever visited an advanced club before? Okay, TOP started in 2010, and it was started by 75% at that time, 75% of district leadership, because as a lot of you belong to multiple clubs, you really don't get the quality of feedback in terms of evaluations in your regular clubs. Am I correct in saying that? Yes. Because we always hear the term whitewashed evaluation. So the intent was to have a club where it's just speeches and evaluations, speeches and evaluations. We only have four roles. We have Toastmaster, Timer, Speaker Evaluator. That's it. And as you'll hear a little bit later on, two formal evaluations and we turn it over to the group for a round robin. So each speaker is going to receive approximately, depending on the length of speech sometimes, somewhere between <coughs> 8 to 10 minutes or more of in-depth feedback. Because that's really what we're craving. And Val, we talked about that a long time ago, we really do more coaching than just giving you feedback so that you can take whatever speech or presentation you're working on, you can really incorporate that feedback and apply it tomorrow or the next day you give that speech and or presentation. So it becomes really valuable feedback. James has been here before. A number of other of you have attended top before. 
So it's really important, the speech and evaluation, if you want to practice a longer presentation to a maximum of 20 minutes, you can come to top and practice that. If you have multiples, if you're doing a 40 minute or 60 minute, then would break it up into three different modules. One of our members, Joel Weber, who's not here tonight, he's a lawyer, and he's done that. We broke it up in three different modules. So we'll you know, give you time to do that. The real benefit of, if you really want to take your speaking to another level, because what I mentioned about the CC, CLs, advanced manuals, the majority of Toastmasters, unfortunately, they never advance to another level. They say they come to your club, they want to just get over nervousness, anxiety, they want to become a better presenter because their boss told them they need to work on their communication skills, they need to work on their gestures, English is a second language, whatever it is, but here's really where you get to hone and refine those skills. Because the majority of the club, they're all experienced Toastmasters. We have Toastmasters that speak both in Toastmasters and outside of Toastmasters, professional speakers, if you will, Diane being one of them, Barry's back there, Val, uh, Virginia spoke outside of Toastmasters, a number of other of you spoke outside of Toastmasters and get paid to do that. Here's the place where you can come and do that. We meet the first and third Wednesdays from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. We meet in this room here. And typically we'll have, depending on the length of speeches, usually we'll have three, four, sometimes five speeches. And I promise you and guarantee that you'll walk away with valuable feedback that you can really apply and use. But we ask that two things. If you have a CC already, you can join the club. If you don't have a CC, then we ask you to audition. It's an icebreaker, four to six minutes. We all know what an icebreaker is. We want you to talk about you, and then of course let us know why you think you'd be a good fit and how you'd benefit from joining Toastmasters on purpose. Okay? If you want more information, you can see Joanne, you can see me, you can see Kim, you can see Virginia, Roger, Bob, Bob Sims, Jacob, all the members of the top, and they'll tell you more. So right now, you ready to win some prizes? Yes. yes. We're going to do this in a lightning round because we're already running behind here. So, Neil, come on up. Does everyone have a ticket? Everyone have a ticket. Bob, Barry, did you get a ticket? Yes, sir. Okay, everybody got one? Yep. Yes. Kim, you want to come up, please? This is officially an hour okay. break, yes. right? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> no, no, you're going you're to win the prize table. All right. Oh, wait, I said, I'm going to have a first Nobody wants to see me. You want to go to the prize table? Yeah. I don't, huh? I don't want to pick one for someone. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So you pick one, Kim, and then we'll. I pick one. Yeah, you pick one. I put mine. <laughs> no, not those. Not those. Oh, not these. <laughs> no, those, those are the seven. Those are the seven. <laughs> not those. Okay, this one. She was our VP. <laughs> so I picked a book. <laughs> All right, let them know what book it is. Oh, okay. The book is the exceptional presenter. Excellent book for those of you who really. Timothy Kogel. Yeah, excellent book. Okay. <laughs> From the White House to Boardrooms Worldwide. And the ticket number is 55100. Is there a name? Yes. Oh. Mr. Barry Nixon. Oh. He's, he's French. He's, 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 Barry, I'll tell you more later on. Barry's in French mode. So, okay, next. Next one is punch fear in the face. <laughs> Escape average. average. Do work that matters. Start. How many do you know that got stopped in the start? Some members of your clubs, perhaps? They started a CC, and what happened? They stopped. This will help get them unstuck. Go from average to awesome. That's right. All right, here we go. Five five zero nine one. Yeah. Mr. Bob Chico. <laughs> okay, Kim. Okay, here we go. This one. The book of affirmations. Not affirmations, but affirmations. Affirmations. Noah St. John. Discovering the missing piece to abundant health, wealth, love, and happiness. Noah St. John. <laughs> okay, five five zero seven nine. No way, she's got to take her ticket out. Well, I know who it is. Five five zero seven nine. <laughs> Beat it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
All right, this one. Okay, Lewis Ho's The School of Greatness, a real-world guide to living bigger, loving deeper, and leaving a legacy. Have any of you ever seen him on YouTube? Yes, Isn't he awesome, Val? I've been watching him for years, and yes. he's handsome, too. Yes, he is. Yes, yes, he's handsome. Yeah, he's, he's, he's terrific. So if you haven't seen him on YouTube, go on YouTube and you can... Okay. Okay, oh, Karnak. Okay. Karnak says... Where's the turban? I think he's Karnak. Okay, the number is... It's Diane. Diane. <laughs> Keep it cold up for 24 hours. Oh, that's cool. So yes. So you can drink all night. Yeah. <laughs> Just not at Toastmasters. Beverage of choice. Good for the summer festivals. <laughs> Svetlana. Oh! Right. No complaining, no explaining. Wow. <laughs> no, no complaining, no explaining. Do you have anybody in your life that complains? <laughs> Anyone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's it. I was Virginia. Not anymore. <laughs> you cut them out of your life. You cut them out. Ciao. Ciao, baby. Mr. James T. or inspirational, Diane was talking about inspiration, then let them know what it is. Oh. <laughs> looking at the page. <laughs> great quotes from great leaders. Oh, that's Ooh. a good There's a lot of quotes in here. This is cool. Where'd you get this one? Oh, please. <laughs> you can't go anywhere. Ray Kroc from Chicago, Mount Prospect. This could not be for a better person. McDonald's, Ray Kroc. <laughs> <laughs> Who got this one? Stella. Stella! Inspiring. Thank you very much. 2018, 2019. You might have the opportunity to use one. Say that one for the last one. No, say that last. Okay. Ooh, that's cute. All right, here we go. Live every moment, laugh every day, love beyond words. Cute mom. Aww. 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 What? Does it say Virginia on the tin? No, <laughs> I didn't get it. You didn't get a ticket? I got here. I remembers where it's supposed to go. Oh, here, I got one. No, 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 that's yours. I'm Van, I'm Van, I'm Van, I'm Van, Who got it? Who got it? Linda. <laughs> Actually, I can. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I will. <laughs> and he did. Vegeta! How this was all going to work out with the raffle tickets and there's an individual here tonight how many of you are star wars fans well there's a serious star wars fan yeah, here yeah. tonight all right vanna all right okay. oh okay this oh my gosh this is cool yes it is this is really cool it is a limited edition journal with a free bookmark. It's 20 years of Star Wars, 1977 to 1997. Wow. Wow. wow, that's very cool. Limited edition. Limited edition. Limited edition. So those of you who are real Star Wars fans. <laughs> oh, oh I thought you were, knew who you were giving it to. <laughs> I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take away your job. You know? okay. I thought I was fired there. But you said there's one out there. I thought you knew who it was. Michelle Wang! <laughs> because Barry's sitting over there. You're going to have to try to get out the door without Oh, that's what it is. Be careful when you break the Jedi might try to... That's right. Barry, what did you say? Jeb's job. He's in French mode. He's in French mode. Talk to me before. French mode. Okay, no more prizes for right now. We're going to take an eight-minute break. Please help yourself to some more food, some refreshments. We'll come back. We've got one more speaker, and then we'll go through evaluations and have some time left for socializing and having fun. We're rolling. Okay, please grab your food, your drinks, and please be seated. Because we still have one speech to go, and we have two evaluations that are going to be given. Is everybody having a good time so far? Yes. yes? Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. If uh, Neil or B, could you dim the lights back there? Kim, are you going to light it? So the cake is back there, and Kim is going to light the cake, and then she'll cut it up so that you can have a piece of cake right after we finish the speaking portion and the feedback portion. So there's plenty of cake. If you're not going to have it here, at least please take a piece and take it home with you. Come on. Thanks, Vegeta. You got to take a picture of that. Where? If you turn if you turn on your phone during the break, please make sure that it's again it's on silent. Okay, so the eighth anniversary cake is lit. Kim is going to cut it up into pieces. Please take a piece and and enjoy it along with some of the other desserts. So this portion of the meeting, as I told you earlier, uh, Harsh brought up a, he made a comment to me. Just so you all know that when you audition for top, it's not 46 minutes, maybe I spoke a little bit fast. <laughs> it's four to six minutes. Because Harsh goes, oh my goodness, 46 minutes, Jerry. That's like doing, that's like doing a keynote. So four to six minutes if you come in audition, if you have your CC, you can become a member of top right away. And we welcome you to come back to uh, a regular meeting which will be next week because this this month we've got meetings back to back both the 11th and the 18th same time same place that's right thank you Val for reminding me 
So tonight, James Treywick, he belongs to our sister district, District 103, so he'll be competing with 103. Eric Feinendagen, which I think a lot of you know, he's going to be here next week Monday, or next week Wednesday, rather, the 18th, to practice his international speech. So if you're interested in coming to listen to Eric, please come back on the 18th, and you'll hear Eric deliver one or two of his speeches. I think he's going to do his final speech next week for practice. Okay? So now our next speaker. I'm going to ask Roger to introduce our next speaker, and you'll understand why. <laughs> our next speaker tonight is a passionate and energetic speaker. He's an entrepreneur and self-proclaimed addict for communication, public speaking, and improving his leadership skills. He has a disease of public speaking, which is quite contagious. He is a proud member of Toastmasters and has won numerous awards and, and speaking contests throughout the decade-long journey in District 30 Toastmasters, including Toastmaster of the Year twice and Area Governor of the Year. He earned his Distinguished Toastmaster Award in 2011. Jerry is the past District 30 Club Extension Chair, helping to start and build more than 80 Toastmaster Clubs. He is a member of four Toastmaster Clubs, including Toastmasters on Purpose, which he co-founded with other district leaders. So he walks the talk. He has held almost every officer leadership position in Toastmasters, from serving as president of multiple clubs and every other officer role except treasurer. <laughs> he has served as district conference chair to Toastmaster Leadership Institute, assistant dean of education, and conducting special district communication and leadership events and presenter at various district conferences. He has just received and completed his role as club growth director for District 54, where he continued to serve the club and their members. He inspires, aspires to inspire, empower, impact people, and act as an inspirational catalyst to help Toastmaster members achieve the success they desire. What I know at the top, I learned at the bottom, where he will share key lessons learned. Please help me welcome distinguished Toastmaster Jerry Evans. Can you turn up the lights now? Thanks. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> Let me button my jacket. Hold on. <laughs> Dad, I've got this great idea. I think that you and I should join Toastmasters. Why, Kevin? Well, Dad, it's going to be a great opportunity for you and I to bond together and to work on our communication skills. You really want to do this? Yeah, I want to do it with you. My son Kevin and I, who at the time was 20, just shy of his 21st birthday, he called me and we had that conversation. And usually my son, you'd have to know my son Kevin, he's usually like, Dad, let's go whitewater rafting. Dad, let's go bungee jumping. And then one time he called me and he said, Dad, let's go skydiving. <laughs> and I thought about it for two seconds. And I'm kind of a spontaneous guy, and I'm like, you mean we have to jump out of an airplane 14,000 feet? And he goes, yes, Dad, we do. But on that particular night, we visited a club called Mount Prospect Toastmasters. And we walked into the club, and there was this handsome, distinguished gentleman who greeted us extended his hand, and he says, Hi, my name is Dick Storr. Who are you? 
And he did the same thing, he extended his hand to my son Kevin. Hi, I'm Dick Storer, who are you? I'm Kevin Evans. That was my introduction to Toastmasters. And Dick Storer is sitting back there in the room. And he started to tell us what was going to go on the meeting. And we sat down, and of course, like a lot of us, you know, we had an agenda. We had no idea what any of those roles meant, what the Toastmaster did. Evaluator, timer, grammarian, and all that. And Toastmasters, uh, or rather Mount Prospect Toastmasters, they also have this role called a munchie master or a snack master, <laughs> which happened a little bit later here. So as we went through that meeting, I'm like, wow, this is really interesting. Then I started to realize, because I started to reflect on where I was at in my life at the time, and my background is in sales and marketing. I had some public speaking experience, and I've done a lot of major client presentations, yet I realized that I needed to up my speaking skills. I needed to have an upgrade, just much like we upgrade our computer, right? And I thought, maybe this would be the right environment for me. So Dick, you know, again, he walked us through the meeting. He was very cordial, very warm and welcoming. And he introduced us to the other Toastmasters. And we got through that first meeting. And of course, then comes not the pitch, but the invitation. <laughs> and it was just that. He said, I'd like to invite you back to the next meeting, Jerry and Kevin. And here's a membership application. <laughs> Fast forward two weeks, July 1st, 2008. I became an official member of Toastmasters International. The journey that Dick Storer got me started on at that time has continued to this day because fast forward a decade later and the things that I've learned and when I first joined I never realized how much fun and how much I would grow and the different roles that I would take on. Have some of you experienced that? You've been voluntold to be president or vice president of education, membership, sergeant arms, whatever. Or in Virginia's case, she just keeps doing treasurer and treasurer <laughs> and VPE no, and VPE. And she keeps people. saying yes. And I said, there is power in no sometimes <laughs> when they try to volunteer. So as I started to get more and more immersed in the Toastmasters, Dick said, Jerry, you want to step up into leadership? Well, I realized at the time there were seven officers. And he says, well, you can start out at the bottom, hence the title, what I now know at the top. I learned at the bottom. I started out as Sergeant at Arms. <laughs> and then the next year I got promoted. And then the next year I got promoted. The next year got promoted. As I went through the various roles. But what I really started to realize, Dick said that, Jerry, if you really want to grow your skills and learn more and do more, he said you need to go outside of Mount Prospect Toastmasters. And some of, this, some of you in this room know Joan Moore, who's a past district governor. She invited me to her club is 219 downtown on Dearborn Street, and it's the federal building. And she goes, I'd like to invite you to come speak there. And the first speech that I ever gave at Club 219 was a speech called Someday I. And some of you in this room I know have heard it before. It's about how we always put off kind of procrastinating. Someday I'll do this, someday I'll do that. One day, someday I'll get around to it. And then I realized that her club was 85, 90% female. I had never spoken in front of all women before. <laughs> and that was quite the experience. And it was well received and I got positive feedback to it. But of course they gave me, you know, suggestions how I could improve it. That started me on another journey because I realized one of the key lessons at that point is that we can never learn less, we can always learn more. Because no matter how much I thought about doing public speaking or speaking or presenting in general, I realized that that feedback when they talk about feedback being the breakfast of champions, I realized that's really where I needed to focus my efforts to focus more on the evaluations, and then that would help me be a better speaker. As I started to speak outside of, or go to different clubs and speak, and get to know a lot of other people, the other Toastmasters, I met some amazing people, and to this day I've made some wonderful friends because I realized that it's a relationship business. We're all in the emotional transportation business. But I realized that it was about relationships. And I would extend myself, because even though we're Toastmasters, a lot of times I know all of you have been to meetings where you may be the first one to interact, engage with someone. They won't come up to you. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. You know, we love to talk in Toastmasters. Why don't more people come up and engage you and interact with you? Well, the more that I started to do that, I'm like, wow, this is awesome, because I got to know more people. 
and of course getting involved in different aspects of leadership and you start moving up through the ranks then I became an area governor and you know followed that fell that route but the second lesson that I learned is I watched people like Dick Storr I watched people like Bob Roman and other very experienced and seasoned Toastmasters is that the next track for me was the leadership track I had led teams of people before but getting the feedback that I received and what I could do to improve my leadership skills was by watching and observing more experienced seasoned Toastmasters and how they interacted, how they led people. Because one of the first values of Toastmasters is the I, which is integrity. And I observed them always acting with integrity, always being truthful, always being honest. And I remember having a conversation with Dick Storr and he said, Jerry, he goes, whatever you do, do the right things for the right reasons. He said, this is a volunteer organization. And he said, you can't force people to do things they don't want to do. It's like that old cliche, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Well, you can lead a Toastmaster to a meeting, but you can't make him speak, right? <laughs> you can't make him sign up for any kind of role, speaking role or otherwise. Well, as I dug deeper in that, the third lesson that I learned, and Dick shared this with me, because when I gave my 10th speech, my CC, Dick Storer was there, Bob Roman was there, Joan Moore, who I referenced, was at my division governor at the time, there for my first speech, my fifth speech, for my 10th speech. He gave me this book. It's called Personally Speaking, and that's by Dr. Smedley. And I've cherished this to this day, because to me, this is the primer in the Bible. Because just like Virginia was talking about the CC, when we always go back to basics and fundamentals, you can't go wrong, can you? As I started to sift through this, and this was written back in the 1940s, but it's just as relevant today when it was written back in the 1940s and reprinted back in the 60s to the 2000s right now, 2018. So that lesson about continually learning, because in, Japan, in Japanese it's called Kaizen or continuous and never, never ending learning, or Shogai Gaikushu, which means that school is never out for us. Even when you lose formal schooling, that we continue that education up until the day we die. So my fellow Toastmasters, my journey over the past decade has been one that's evolved over the years. It went from the very beginning when I first walked into that Mount Prospect Toastmasters Club, then when I joined my second Toastmasters Club, which was Palatine Toastmaster, Srinivas Sayaniti was the president of the club at the time. He became a, a district governor. And then the next thing I know, 75% leadership said, let's start this club called Toastmasters on Purpose so that we can focus more on speaking and evaluations. And then getting involved with the other district. But it's been a constant and never-ending process of learning and growing. Because we're never done, are we? And this is going back maybe five or six years ago. I was at a conference, and then in 2011, Prez Vasilov, who's a 2013 world champion in public speaking, we are at the convention in Las Vegas. And someone was talking about Helen Blanchard. She was the first female president of Toastmasters International. And I forget who was the speaker at the time, but the speaker said that Helen Blanchard's quote, she said, if you get all there is out of Toastmasters, you will never ever get out of Toastmasters. And I realized at that point in time that people like Dick Storer with Bob Rome and other seasoned experienced Toastmasters, why in the world did they stand in for 50 years, 38 years, 50, well Dick's gonna be 58 years, Bob is 38 years, and Val is 23 years, and other seats because they keep learning, they keep growing. There are these things called used to be DTMs. Because you've heard the phrase, used to be's don't make no honey. <laughs> well, used to be DTMs, if they don't constantly hone and refine and keep those skills up, if they got them 10 years ago, 15 years ago, then Virginia was talking about that muscle, that speaking muscle that atrophies and it gets it hardens, and they don't keep that sharpness up, right? So being a distinguished Toastmaster means that I want to uphold the highest values of Toastmasters. It's not a striving for perfection. It's striving for us to make those connections, to reach out and help other newer Toastmasters. Because the journey that I've traveled, I haven't traveled alone. 
because they say that communication is depositing a part of yourself in another human being. All of you sitting here tonight, you've made deposits in my Toastmaster bank account. And I've been enriched because of that. Because every person we meet in Toastmasters, we can learn something from them. No matter if they're a newer Toastmaster, somebody in the middle of the journey, or somebody that's farther along in the path. All we need to do, Diane was talking about, just listen with your ears. Listen with your heart. Have the heart of a Toastmaster. And that's what I've tried to uphold during this past decade. Because I was fortunate that I came upon Dick Storer and Bob Roman. Because we learned from their experiences and their knowledge. And in 2012, I'll leave you with this, in 2012 I had the opportunity to sit with my brother from another mother in Orlando, Florida, when he was competing for the World Championship of Public Speaking. And I gladly and lovingly sat beside him to watch him compete to become the world champion in public speaking. And we partied like crazy with all leadership afterwards. But that experience, again, is that there's always the opportunity to learn and grow. So what I now know at the top, that I learned at the bottom, I realized that once we're on top, that there's still mountains to climb. And we continue to go farther and farther. Mr. Toastmaster. We're going to have our two evaluators, which, which are going to evaluate my speech, Bob Roman and Val. So Bob is going to evaluate my content, and then Valerie will come up and she will evaluate my delivery. Please help me welcome distinguished Toastmaster Bob Roman. and guests. <clears throat> My evaluation is on his content. I really enjoyed your speech. I was a little bit confused about the purpose of it. And even when you ended it, I really <coughs> didn't have that. Uh, so I would like you to say, when did you get the hook stuck in you, or when did you get the disease? What particular moment? That would have been nice for you to say that my first speech, I knew I was a Toastmaster for life. Then uh, you did men you mention later on, but in the beginning would have been more or less, why are you still here? That, that would have been why it continued. Uh, I liked how you promoted ethics because I, that is my number one thing. Mount Prospect uh, finished with 19 members. I could have invented a 20th member and paid, paid the dues for 20 to be distinguished. But that's not Toastmasters. But many people would tend to do that but not Jerry Evans. Jerry Evans wouldn't do anything like that. Neither would I, neither would Dick Store. So I know Kevin didn't follow you and didn't get bit. So what happened to him? That would have been nice to let the people know. You joined with your son. Your son's not here now, so <laughs> He's still alive. <laughs> yeah, he's still alive. In the beginning, too, you really didn't get started. You'd be talking about yeah. other people involved in the Toastmasters. I would have liked it that would have been a good push to say is, well, are you getting the value out of Toastmasters? And use, it, use that as to draw people in who draw people into top, 
for one thing, because people who are in Toastmasters, are they getting the evaluations they need? I think that would have been something that you could have been brought up, that the reason you created top was getting into the evaluations and, and how your evaluations have improved because of this club. But it was a great speech. I congratulate you on eight years as a toast as a toastmaster, or ten years rather, and eight years in uh, starting uh, top here. But uh, who knows uh, if you're in toastmasters for life and you're ex yeah, you can live another. 30 years, who knows, you, be, you might be approaching Dick and myself. <laughs> Don't you love feedback? So now, so now to evaluate <laughs> delivery, please help me welcome the distinguished Toastmaster Valerie Fusin. to have a dialogue, we like to hear the characters in the speech. Uh, you did a really nice job with the gestures, uh, some of the you know, upgrading your speaking skills, you used this more and more, and when you were talking about someday, so you have a lot of opportunity for uh, good gestures, and then continue that education. So. Almost throughout the speech, you had a good use of your body language and gestures. You had a couple places where you had humor, which uh, I think you've been working on. And everyone sees Jerry as always the most perfect speaker. I've seen Jerry growing, growing from week to week. Um, one thing that you've really grown exceptionally well with is having more, more emotion in your speeches. And that's something, you know, and really engaging the audience more. So you're really coming out and doing a better job at that. But really the emotion is what I've, I've seen the growth in. Um, you know, you, you did see you know, your eyes change a little bit. and you, It felt very natural. So I really love that you did that. One thing you always have is wonderful presence. You come up very confident. You're always in a suit when you're going to speak. And that's something that we all should learn from. When you're up on, going to be up on stage, dress the part. You always dress the part. And what that does is that brings the authority. You're here. You're the authority on stage. And you always have that. Um, so that's a wonderful thing uh, because it changes people's perspective also. When you're the authority up here, people lean in. One thing I would suggest for, uh, to improve your, speak, your, your speech is I love that you started with the dialogue. One thing though, <coughs> you were looking down when you were talking to Kevin and you were looking down when Kevin was talking to you. So, practice that so that you, you know, is he taller than you, is, are, you, are you taller than him? Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, you could have had more enthusiasm, more energy when you opened the speech. It was a little low key. Uh, was Kevin enthusiastic? Dad, you know, let's join Toastmasters. So you could have done that, and what that would have done is that would have brought more energy into your opening. Your openings should always be energetic, unless you're making a point, an emotional point. So that was the only thing is that I would recommend is that make sure that your opening is strong, 
and uh, watch your uh, the dialogue. So, um, but great speech, loved it. got a glimpse of how we do evaluations. We do content delivery and then typically because we're running behind schedule now, we would open it up to the group for additional feedback. So verbal feedback from everybody or you know you write it down and ideally you know you write it down. Tony's Club Northwest Suburban, they've got a form. Some of your clubs I'm sure probably have different feedback forms. It doesn't really matter. Don't get caught up on the form mm -hmm. because if you're just focused on the form then you're probably not really paying attention to Virginia and I, as an example, she and I were given a presentation one time, and of course we're using PowerPoint. Everybody love PowerPoint, don't you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we're doing this presentation, and then there were, I don't know, 60, 70 people in the room, and somebody came up to she and I afterwards, and they go, well, we want to give you feedback. I said, okay. Do you know on your one slide you didn't dot the I and cross the T? <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> And she and I looked at the other and go, that's what they were focused on? <laughs> so how much did they really get out of the presentation if they were just worried about, you know, one slight, you know, minutia, you know, grammatical error? I want to recognize a couple folks, and that's why Kim, she's back there, uh, she was going to come down with these bags. <laughs> <laughs> you got to watch her. She's, she's got, you know, tricky fingers. Good for Chingy to help you. First, first, I want to call up our immediate past president, uh, Mr. Roger Matthews. loves music and I was thinking about an appropriate gift to give him because he, he gave a speech about guitars which is a lovely speech and he used to work for the Gibson company so I thought what unique item can I give him that will remind him of his love for music that every single day will make him think of it so Raj you can share you have to share with everybody I will. I yeah you do. have to share with everybody <laughs> Seems to be a cup. <laughs> yes, a certain kind. Not shaped like a guitar. Yeah. Oh. 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 Okay, now I want to call up our Vice President of Education and Chief Ambassador Extraordinaire, Ms. Valerie Fusan. Please come on up. based on a conversation she and I have been having recently, she'll understand the significance of it. If she chooses to, she can explain the meaning behind it. You have to oh, tell them the title. Um, you always have great sex. <laughs> Part two. The sequel. The sequel, yeah. Get a picture. Oh, you, you are a badass. <laughs> Your greatness and start living an awesome 
an awesome life. Fucking yes! <laughs> <laughs> Kim. Come on up, Kim. I haven't finished the cake yet. That's all right. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Kim was our vice president of education. Val was our vice president of education this year. Oh, my gosh. Okay. You better say badass or I'm going to be disappointed. No. <laughs> no. no. You, have to, you have to deal with Val. No, you. I'm not, because I don't want to get near here. <laughs> she got that book now. That's going to teach her something. Oh, no. That's not, that's not, that's not mine? That's not true. Okay. Right. Die. I'm sorry. Die. Come on up. Put it back. I got the wrong one. Put it back. Put it back. Die. Come up. What? I'm sorry. Back. I got it mixed up. I got it mixed up. Die. Come on up. <laughs> And you can explain the meaning of that. I'm sorry. Oh, dear God. I thought you didn't do table topics. In the middle, please. In the middle, please. Right. Oh, in the middle, please. We want to, we want to get you on camera. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. This is really scary because I know Jerry's sense of humor. So. Well, let's see what he's got. <laughs> oh. Oh. Let's see it. Uh, it's a oh. flamingo handled mug. Oh. In Mount Prospect, when I joined, we started a tradition of having <coughs> holiday parties. But some of the locations for the holiday parties were on dark streets, like my original street. There were no street lights. So we put out Fred, which is a four and a half foot pink flamingo who oh. lights up and does this. <laughs> so anytime I see a flamingo now, it's party time. Oh my gosh, that's it. You. You recently got me, tell them what kind of mug you got me, because you know how I look. I didn't. Did I, do? I didn't do that. Yes, you did. Tell them what you got. I don't remember. You fess up. You, you liked it. You liked it. <laughs> I'm going to make her tell you. I'm not going to. Kim. Oh, Kim. Jen is so healthy. She takes all these supplements and nutrients and all this other stuff, and she gets her chakras in alignment and, and all these other things. So I can I thought, help you, Jerry. Huh? I'm teaching stress reduction and meditation now. Well, you know what stress spells backwards? What does it spell backwards? Desserts. Desserts. <laughs> which, which I am still setting up in the middle. Okay, which, which, brings me, which brings me to this part, Kim. See, I thought, since you're all healthy and doing all this different stuff, see, this is a cute chocolate fondue. Oh, cool! So you can have fruit and whatever awesome. else you choose to put into it. It's just colorful. Just, dark like, chocolate. Colorful, just like your personality. Oh, that's cool. I like it. So, Thank you so much. You're so welcome. That's wonderful. Thank you. Dear. Okay, you got your raffle, you got your raffle tickets, yes? Yes. Okay. I have the raffle tickets. Huh? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Three of our members. You can't give away the fire extinguisher. The <laughs> what, what, what excites you, ignites you, Jen? You got some inspiration tonight. You got music to your ears. You got what I learned at top. I, what I know at the top. I learned at the bottom. So now, three of our wonderful Toastmaster members agreed to contribute some coaching. Some coaching. Yay. We can all use we can all use coaching. So my brother from another mother, Mr. Barry Mixon, who he's used his Toastmaster skills to go way beyond Toastmasters inside of Toastmasters. And now he speaks internationally and he also now speaks French. <laughs> and he just came back from what I consider kind of a world tour. He was in France, he was in Ireland, I think he was in England, and kind of like sometimes I can't keep track of him where he's at because he's so busy and he's doing all these other, these other projects, which is wonderful because he does gemological storytelling. 
And he and I have talked about that for years, and now he teaches that. That's his full-time job, and it goes beyond that. So Barry has graciously agreed to a half hour of coaching. You can see Barry before he leaves, and then if you want him to look at his speech, you work that out with him. He'll give you a half hour of coaching time. Good enough? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Jen? I don't have a ticket in there. That's not fair. Jerry, is it going to be in French or that one? No, it's going to be in English. Barry, French or English, whichever they prefer. Uh, yeah, we. Oui. Okay. <laughs> okay. He's good. That's all. That's Jean-Pierre. He's good. Yeah. 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 You ready for this? Yes. Lakin. Oh! And my oh, pal Jerry, Val. Jerry, 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 let me just have Jerry, let me just have one minute. From there. From, from here. Just okay. From right here. Okay. Um, I don't want to talk about content or delivery. I just want to talk about what Jerry said in his speech was far deeper than what he even said. Because in 2010, I was going to quit Toastmasters. I mean, I was done with Toastmasters. I was in Puerto Rico in a jewelry and gold convention, uh, appraiser convention, and I was done. I was literally talking to him. He said, Barry, just stay. No, I'm sick of Toastmasters. It's just all the whatever. I was just tired of it. He said, just stay. Just There's something that you have to say that the world needs to hear. That was in 2010. <laughs> All my championship wins came after that. I didn't become a DTM until 2011. My first contest win was in 2011. The world championship going there was in 2012. So everything that I've done, I have, God knows how many trophies I have, but when I talk to Jerry, literally, it's an honor to know where the source was. And so I could not, the reason why I drove here, I dressed like I was playing with my little niece and nephew, and everything, but I had to be here. Because if nothing else, just to literally publicly give homage and thanks to my brother from another mother. Because if it wasn't for him, all the things that I do today would not have been possible. So just thank you so much. I love you forever for everything that you've done. You've changed. You've literally changed my life. And I just wanted to say that to you. Wow. Uh -huh. So my pal Val is a world-class certified speaking coach. She's helped me immensely over the years because some of the things Val is able to do, some of you, you know, have heard Val speak before and Val sounds sometimes very soft-spoken, but she is a wonderful coach because she can draw things out of you that you don't recognize about yourself. And she's done that a lot for a lot of us in Toastmasters on Purpose and for the other clubs that she belongs to. So she has graciously agreed to donate an hour of coaching time. An hour of coaching time. Oh, hell, Okay. Oh, it's mine. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Mary Matron. Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> Everything no, no. Toastmasters, what do they teach us, Jen? Three, right? Oh, that's Always right. Always the triad, yeah. three and three, yeah. three, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we own on three. Our second speaker this evening was who? Diane. Diane. So I did a little twisting and turning and coaxing and <laughs> persuading <laughs> Diane, trying to work on my persuasion skills. Diane has graciously agreed to donate an hour of coaching time. That's so it. your choice. Both. <laughs> Thank goodness Eric's not here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next week.
<laughs> next week. Next week. So you can get with Diana and you can work the schedule out and timing and all that in terms of what you work on because she has different programs. So if you want to work on body language or her new program, which she's going to introduce and kick off very soon, it's called Singlish, which is awesome. So English is a second language plus for us native speakers. Certainly her program will help you as well. <laughs> what? Nothing. She's telling me Jerry the red card. So, yeah. inspiration speaks. Inspiration. I, I listen. Okay, Roger. Oh. So at this time, I would like to call up our president, Bob Roman, for any closing comments, remarks, and still we have plenty of food back there and drinks, so hang around and, and network, talk to each other, and connect up, folks. That's what it's all about. Jerry, real quick. Yes. We're not done yet. We're not? No. I'll donate a coaching session on video or a filming of an <laughs> event for somebody who would like it here. Draw, please. Okay. Oh, thank all right, you, yeah, Tim. One more. All right. That's awesome. It's good. Yeah, that's really good. By the way, Tim, he records our speeches. So if you come here and you speak, so he'll either just give it to you, he won't send it out publicly, right. he won't distribute it for your own. I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> okay. I think I'm, I think, is, is it Robin? Yeah, yeah Robin. Robin. Okay. That's, that's inspiration. That's that's inspiration and incentive for him to. Did he give you the application and the check yet? <laughs> okay. You, I'll, I'll well, you know, it, Neil, you and I know. Jerry, show me the money, right? So he's got to show you the money. Okay. So at this time, Bob Roman, our president for closing comments and remarks, Mr. Bob Roman. Jerry, as always, you do an outstanding job as Toastmasters. One of these days, you'll get it really correct and right. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm working on it, Mr. President. Now, I'm going to be speaking to the guests who are here. And that is that we are inviting you to join Top Toastmasters. Some of you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. This isn't exactly next door to where I live. <laughs> no, for me either. Where, uh, where do you live, Virginia? Uh, right now I live in Wakanda. I used to come from Gurney. And Valerie, where do you live? Lake Zurich. I live in Chicago. <laughs> now, if someone gave you a map and said, at the end of this map, this location is where you're going to get it all. Would you take the map? Or would you say, that's too far? <laughs> <laughs> I never, ever in Toastmasters, when I visited a club and I thought that I could be a part of that club, I joined it. I live in Chicago. In the 38 years I've been a Toastmaster, I've never joined a club in Chicago. <laughs> I lived in Buffalo Grove. I drove to Park Ridge. I lived in Buffalo Grove. I drove to Oak Brook. You drove to Barrington? In Barrington and then uh, uh, Naperville. So distance, that's just an excuse. Mm -hmm. It's just an excuse. Now you're saying, well, I'm not that good of a Toastmaster, of a speaker. Well, this is where you're really going to improve. Why do you think I'm still here? Because mm -hmm. it gets the evaluations and the feedback. Why does Jim come from the south side of Chicago all the way here? Because he sees value in what we can provide to him. 
So our vice president of membership, Joanne Pelly, <laughs> talk to her, and um, we would gladly accept you. We got two ways of doing it. So now there's cake. <laughs> if somebody wants to serve the cake, we have plenty, plenty of desserts left. And it's not quite, well, it's a little bit after nine, but you can stay as long as you want because in the top, we don't have any. Next meeting is next, next meeting. Next oh, week. the oh. next meeting next week. is next week. The 18th. Normally, we uh, don't meet on the second Wednesday of the month, but the first Wednesday was July 4th. And we were all stuffing ourselves. So we decided instead of only having one meeting in July, of course we have to have two meetings. So we're going to be meeting two weeks in a row. So what? <laughs> I always look at things, it's value people look at when they decide anything. So the value is here. Now it's decision time for all of you non-top members. So the meeting's adjourned, but not all the food and <laughs> everything else. So. All right.